Disney. Welcome back to your house. What's up, Yara fam? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Yara to You. I'm Miss Tina, and you're joining me for What's That Sound? So can anyone remember the two hints from the previous episode? If not, that's okay. The first hint is you sit on these when you're in chapel, and the second one is you use it to tell the time. So if you guessed it right, the words are chair and watch. So you sit on chairs when you're in chapel and you use a watch to tell the time. So I'll give you a few seconds for you to guess what sound these two have in common. So chair and watch. So I'll give you a few seconds now for you to guess what's that sound. Alright, so time's up. The sound for today is drum roll please. Ch, ch for chair and ch for watch. You can't see these are spelled differently. The ch sound in chair is ch and the ch sound in watch is tch. So ch and ch, ch, tch. So remember that for the next time you're reading, writing or spelling. So I'll see you later in the next episode. I'll give you a few hints for the next one. The first hint is you go to the Alice Springs cinemas to watch this and you open locked doors with them. So be kind, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye now. Here we are at the Alice Springs Aquatic and Leisure Centre. Let's work out the prices uh, for a family of four. Let's have a look. If you go before 8.30am when it's freezing, the prices are cheaper. But who wants to go then? So let's look at the prices after 8.30am when the sun comes out and it's nice and warm. So an adult, and these prices are just for for one day, an adult pays $6.65 each. A child that's five to 16 years of age pays $4.10. So a family is $17.35. So if we look at these prices individually, the two adults at $6.65 each, the two children at $4.10 each, that, that comes to $38.85. That's a lot of money. That's for a fam uh, that's for uh, individually. But if you buy a family ticket for the day, it's only $17.35. So if you take that from the $38.85,
you save a whopping $21.50. So isn't that a fantastic saving for a day out at the swimming pool? Hello and good day to you. My name is Miss Elizabeth. Welcome to Literacy Skills for Life. We will research what activities and adventures can be done in or near this community. Open a Word document and type a title. Activities to do in your community. My community is Alice Springs. Save the document in community folder. Open a Google search page and type in activities to do in your community. The information on screen will include images and websites. I will use these pictures to complete the assignment. You may choose to search other websites and look for other images. I will select the Larapinta Trail. Click onto the picture and copy and paste onto the Word document. Use Format, Wrap Text and Square. Insert a text box and type in the name of the activity or adventure. Mine is Larapinta Trail. We can search for pictures of other activities to do on Community and copy and paste these onto the Word document. Remember to save. Open a PowerPoint presentation and make a blank PowerPoint slide. Click onto the boxes and delete each one. Go back to the Word document, copy and paste each picture onto the PowerPoint slide. Now a tip to make your work look like an expert's work. Click Insert, move along to Word Art and select a style. A text box will appear on your page. The title for this slide is Activities to do in your community. You can resize the box, change the size of the font and bold it too if you like. We can also insert a word art for our picture. PowerPoint has a feature called Animations. Click onto the text box, go to Animations. There are many different styles to choose from. Try out each one and find some that would make your information interesting. The numbers beside the picture and text box tell us the order for the effects to appear on our screen. Go up to Slide Show and click Current Slide. Use your space bar to start the show. To save in PowerPoint, you have to go to File, Save. Let's check to see how much progress we have made. Well done. Oh, oh, it's time for STEM, another episode of STEM. Your are a science, technology, engineering and math. Hey guys, today we're going to be learning a little bit more about our EV3 model here, our puppy dog. And we're also going to start programming it using our iPad here. Sit dog. Ooh, there we go. Let's go. So that red flashing dot says that we're recording our iPad screen. 
so you can see what I can see. So to get to our Lego app, um, we can see it down at the bottom right there, just next to or in between the movie icon and the photo icon. And once we press on it, this is like our homepage, I guess. Um, and it gives us a few different options, which uh, we'll all learn about. But for today, we're just gonna be going through what's involved in making a new program, which you can see that icon down the bottom left. So we'll press on new program. So this is the page that then pops up. Now you can see this play icon there and I can move it around by putting my finger on it and holding it down. I can move it around anywhere on that page. And there's a few colored tabs down the bottom of our screen. We've got a green one, a yellow one, and a purple one. And they just give us different options um, with our programming. So to make our puppy dog sit down, we need to program the motors that are attached to each of its back legs. So to do that, we select the motors icon. And there's a few different numbers on there. and. Um, icons that you can see on there which will explain what each of those mean and we need to attach that first thing we need to do is we need to drag it across to the play um, button it won't work our program won't work unless it's all connected up so if I put my finger on that button there you can see that says power left so that's controlling the power on the left motor so 40 is a bit high we might change that to 10 and we'll also change the power right motor to 10 as well. So the next one along is rotations and we'll just leave that as one at the moment. Next one is break at end and we're gonna um, select false for that. So that means that our dog's gonna sit only once. And then ports um, need to be A and D. And that's because the cable's running from the motors uh, connect into the ports A and D. I'll just have a quick look on our model. We can see the ports A and D and the cables running um, to motors that are attached to the back right and the back left leg respectively. There's one motor and there's the other motor, the port right there. So there you go, port A and port D. So we've got to make sure that matches up in our programming. Just jumping back to our app, if we look up in the top right hand corner, we can see a little um, icon uh, made up of a programmable brick with a cross. And that basically tells us um, that um, our Bluetooth um, is not working. Our app and our EV3 model are not talking to each other. Um, so we need to sort that out. The first thing we need to do is we need to turn our EV3 programmable brick on. And to do that, we press the big button in the middle um, and this button also acts as our enter key. Now it takes um, a few seconds to warm up, um, sometimes up to 30 seconds. And once it's ready to go, that red light will turn green and you'll see the display lights up with a few different options there. Um, now these options we can scroll through using um, the left and the right um, key. So you can see the options up the top there. And if I press the right button, it goes through right. If I press the left button, I can go through all these other options. Now we want to get the Bluetooth working. So I go down to Bluetooth and I can see that all those boxes are ticked. So that means that our Bluetooth should work. So let's go back to our iPad now. So now if I press that icon up the top right hand corner and I'll get this box come up and then I press connect and now it is just searching for the Bluetooth signal. So the EV3 should pop up very shortly. There it is. So I just select that. And now um, our EV3 model is connected to our app via Bluetooth. So now when I press the play button, our puppy dog sits. Good morning, we're back here at the Centre for Appropriate Technologies workshop, Automotive Workshop. Our customer has dropped off their car for its 120,000 kilometre service. We've got the service manual out of the vehicle. We're just going to have a quick look at what we need to do uh, for the 120,000 kilometre service. 
for the most part, it's checking. There'll be the oils, oil filter, and air filter, fuel filter will be something that gets changed just about every service. There are quite a few other checks when we have a look, and I'm not gonna go through all of them um, at the moment. Um, inspect the cooling fan and lines. Uh, inspect the idling speed. So we look at that, all the fan belts, and a general check over the vehicle. So we'll check the uh, wheel bearings, ball joints, brakes, a general check over of the vehicle as well as all the oils that we need to change. All right. So now we'll just lift the bonnet. So I'm just going to go over a few things. Have a look at our radiator. This is a condenser for the air conditioner. Fairly tidy in there, no bugs, it's not clogged. The intercooler for the turbo, nice and clean. Generally clean under the bonnet. Because we've only just got the vehicle, I'm not going to open the radiator. Brakes. Master cylinder has got fuel in it. Uh, sorry, brake oil, uh, fluid. Power steering is full to the correct level. Our battery is a sealed battery. Connections are nice and tight. That's a little bit loose. We'll need to tighten that. Okay, so the first thing we do when the vehicle's on the hoist, we've got the handbrake on we put chocks on it. Now I'm going to put them on the back wheel because we're going to jack up the front. So that stops the vehicle from rolling off the hoist. So now all clear around the hoist. So now I lift it up to a comfortable working height for me. Yeah, so under here, we're just using the internal jack to lift this uh, front end of the car up so we can check the wheel bearings and ball joints. So it's a little air hoist. So that has a lock on it as well, so we put it up and lock it in. So now what I'm going to do is check the wheel bearings and the ball joints. So we just grab the tyre, move it backwards and forwards. So it's moving both. There's no, there's a tiny little bit of play in there, which is okay. So that's our wheel bearings checked. Now for our ball joints, we put the tyre tire lever under it, any sort of a lever, and lift it up and down. So there's no movement whatsoever there. So that says the ball joints are fine on this side, the upper and lower ball joints. While I'm moving this forward and backwards and forwards, I have a look under here for our tie rod ends, our drag link as well. So they all look fine. So as you can see, I've got my hand on the top of the tire. So I can feel any if there's any movement and there's not. Okay. So now we check the wheel bearings here. That's fine. And we check our drag link and tie rod ends on this side. So this is all we've got time for to show on the video today. There is probably another half an hour's worth of uh, checking on this vehicle before we do the oil changes and filter changes. See you next time. Have a great day.
This week, we watched episode on Earth Fly and meet up some very talented sports people. Some of our fellows were invited to be part of a very special event. Let's see what they got up to. It was a very early start for six of our contact fellows last Friday. Up at 5 a.m., dressed and ready to drive out to Alice Springs Airport before the sun came up. Qantas newest plane, a Boeing Dreamliner 7879, series arrived in Alice Springs. It was really good catching up with John Moriarty at the breakfast. The only time it will ever land here for its official Australian unveiling. We're just waiting for the plane to arrive and with the fantastic artwork, yeah. We got up real early and came to Alice Springs Airport and we just watched the plane land and to me um, it's probably something to be proud of. It looks um, fantastic here. Yeah. Came is named after the indigenous artist who painted over 3,000 pieces of art reflecting on her utopia homeland. Over 60 graphic designers, painters and engineers took more than 10 days to paint about 5,000 dots of the culturally important yam plant on the plane. Just a little challenge out there to any of the family, but being a pilot is definitely a dream that you can achieve. The fellas watched AFL legend Adam Goods, who was an excellent host for the event, share with everyone how the artwork came to be used. Thanks to the support from so many people and organizations, her family were very happy as this became a very memorable time for all. We have got the most ancient languages on earth and they're still spoken on our streets. Art that is older than the pyramids. As Qantas sponsor the Qantas Academy of Australian Wild, it was great for the fellows to be invited to be part of this special event. Hello, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Another special event we enjoyed was a visit from some Commonwealth World athletes as part of the Queen's baton relay that went through Alice Springs. They took us through some exercises and training routines to help us wake up. Let's have a look. For me, sport has been a pathway of education, both in being a better human being, but taking the best version of myself everywhere that I go. My name's Ben Harradine. I am a discus thrower who's represented Australia now for 20 years. Uh, I came to Alice Springs and I'm very grateful that I did um, because I was here for the Queen's Baton Relay. Uh, so the Commonwealth Games uh, Association brought me here and uh, we, yesterday we did the Queen's Baton Relay, which was an incredible honour for me. Um, being a Commonwealth gold medalist, I was super stoked to run through the streets of Alice with the, with the baton and um, just be amazed by the support and, and uh, the community that's been here. Hello, my name is Anthony Nish, I'm from Elliot. 
Hello, my name is David Jones, and I'm from Elliot. Hello, my name is Reese Raven, but I'm from Elliot. This morning, we woke up early in the morning. We went to um, Clontaf Foundation to have a train in the Oval, and we get to meet this guy's thrower. And yeah, we, we just train with him and enjoying all the fun we had for, uh, with him. Yesterday um, was a great opportunity to connect with the community and, and um, a lot of people came up and, and wanted to have photos and ask a bunch of great questions, which was an opportunity for me to share some of my experience and my knowledge with the locals and also learn some things uh, from how the community out here in Alice and, and the neighbouring communities are so successful. Uh, and I think that's awesome that we can share knowledge in every journey that we take. The things that I, that I value the most, I've learnt through sport and it's been a great pathway for me, learning and travelling and meeting new people, but learning from their experiences and their wisdom. And it gives me a great knowledge that I can share out here in communities like Alice. And uh, I think there isn't really one particular form formula that, that inspires people, but I think that the best thing to do, and I've also talked a lot about the last few days, is to own your own journey, to be the captain of your own ship and to be accountable for yourself. Um, those are the things that I find have been most successful in my career. I enjoyed playing footy with the fellas and getting to meet Ben, the disc show. So when I first got to Alice, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, a uh, short stay, and I was able to see some of the great sights that are around here in the day. But the opportunity to come out here to Urara College first thing in the morning at daybreak and uh, enjoy some sport with the kids was super special. Not only did we get to see the beautiful nature and the scenery as the sun rose up over other springs, but we also got to see a great bunch of kids who were enthusiastic and enjoyed being out at that hour uh, playing sport, playing footy and just getting around it. I, I think it was such positive energy and really fun morning and I'm super grateful to have had this opportunity to come out to Ural College and um, spend the time uh, with the teachers and the, and the students here. When we finished training, Ben came and joined us for breakfast. Being this, this is a, probably going to be my last Commonwealth Games, I've been able to reflect a little bit on my own career and being able to do this full circle. I started in Melbourne in 2006 and here I am uh, for my last Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast. But what I've been able to reflect on the most is one of the kids this morning asked me, do you get paid a lot of money throwing discus? And my answer to that question was, well, if you value everything with a dollar sign, I think then you can, the easy answer is no. But what I think that I value most and what I got from, from this was an incredible education to be out here uh, as a sports person in Alice, meeting kids, connecting with kids, just being a person, you know, like I'm a human, I, people can touch me, people can talk to me. Um, I don't see myself as anything other than just a person who has dedicated their life to sport and, and enjoyed it. And I'm so grateful to be able to share my journey in every community I go to, but especially now here in Alice Springs. We had lots of fun. See ya. Hey, I'm Melissa Tapper and I'm Australian table tennis player. I'm Tarita Blake. I'm from the Dungutty tribe and I do athletics. We've come to Alice Springs to be a part of the Queen's Relay Baton and yesterday we had the chance to spend time with the locals. So we're really excited to get to be in Alice Springs, especially at Clontarf, and we're really hoping to have the opportunity to share our stories. Yesterday was really exciting down at Todd Mall, getting to play table tennis with the locals. That was a lot of fun to have everyone come over and play and then as well going out for dinner with a few representatives of Alice Springs as well it was a really nice touch to finish off uh, the day. I'm from the athletics background and like there's kids there that are 400 runners. I'm actually a 400 runner so it was good to sit there and talk about um, where, what they do, what their favourite event is and um, then having photos with them so hopefully as you said we can inspire them to um, achieve their goals. I'm Danielle here interviewing Cathy and Daniels. What did you do this morning, Cathy Ann? We got to meet Melissa and Tarita. We got to do exercise with them and don't have for breakfast. <laughs> That's your TV for this week. Be sure to always do the right things. Bye.